Hello guys, welcome back to CarryCode. In this video, we are going to discuss about stock price prediction. So basically, we are going to learn about how to predict the stock price using machine learning. Without any further delay, let's get into the work. First, I am creating a Jupyter file. I am renaming the file. Our first step is to install the required packages. Like, we have to install Yfinance package. Let's install it. Pip install Yfinance. I'm installing this package to download all the stocks data about any company. Let it install. So here it is showing that uh, requirement already satisfied because I have already installed it. But if you are not installed it, you have to install it using this command. Let me comment out this. After we have to import it. Import Y finance. Yes, YF. So we use this package to download all the stock data. Let's run it. And to import this data, we also have to think about how much data, like how many years data we want to download. So let's define the start and the end dates to get the stock data in between. Let me create a variable start. Before that, I have to import on date and time, right? So from date time, import date time. Then I will be defining two variables. The first one is end and the second one is start. So end date is the current date, right? We have to extract data from certain date from the past to until now. So the date time is so the today's date time is date time dot now. This is how we define today's date time. Then if I want to get the past 10 or 20 years data, I can do this. Take date time n dot year minus if I want 10 years back data, I can give minus 10 and then n dot month comma n dot day so I will be getting the past 10 years data if I give minus 10 so if you want to extract lost 10 years data we're gonna give minus 10 or minus 20 to get lost 20 years data let's run it so we have defined the duration of our data to download uh, from that website so let's go to Yahoo Finance website from where we're gonna download all this stock data Yahoo Finance go to the first link see this website we have all the stock data if you want Google stock data you can search for Google like this Google then you will be getting Google stock data here and this is unique ID that is assigned to Google in this website so to download this Google data we won't do it through the UI but instead we use this why finance package here so in order to extract this data we need a id of this company that is nothing but i have mentioned it before right this google this is the unique id let's copy it and initialize the variable stock here stock equal to google and to download this stock data we can just give y of dot download of the stock data i want to download that is i have already defined it google and the start date from where you want to start the extraction until which point that is today and let's store this data into a variable called google data google data let's run this cell it will extract the data from that website for past 20 years right we have given minus 20 so it extract past 20 years google stock data here so it's completed now let's see how our data looks google data dot head it will show us the first five rows of that data these are the first five rows of our google data if you see the first row it is from 2004 as we took data from past 20 years and it has six columns here like open high low close volume adjusted close like that we have six columns here coming to open it is the open price of the stock for that certain date and same as open we have high low closing price of the stock and volume of the stocks and there is adjusted close price here the difference between the close price and adjusted close price is they both are almost same but the adjusted close price considers other factors like dividend stock splits and a new stock offerings i can say that adjusted close price is more accurate than the close price here let's analyze this data set now first let's see the shape of this data set 
Google data Google data dot shape. So we have 4908 rows and six columns here. And now let's use describe and analyze the data. Google data dot describe. We can see it listed out all the metrics like number of rows, that is count and mean, standard deviation, the minimum value and the maximum value, like that. We can also use info function to see all these type of data. Google data dot info. Like that. Let's run it. We can observe here the mostly all the data is in numeric format like float and int. We don't have any object or string data here. So we can skip the step where we can convert the object data into the numeric format. Now let's check for any null values or empty cells. To find the non-available or null values, we can give this command like Google data dot is n a. By this command is n a, we will get to know that value in the data set as null or not, like true or false. And then we are just giving this dot sum function to add all those true values which are null. In this case, let's see how it looks. So in this case, we don't have any null values in this data set. So it is zero for all columns. It is good. It is clean data set, I hope. Now let's draw some graphs to understand the data much better. To do that so, we have to import matplotlib library. Let's import it. Import matplotlib.pyplot. Yes, plt. We have to do like this, matplotlib inline. So this is how we import this matplotlib. Let's run it. Let's plot the graph for adjusted close price and yes. You can see in this data set there is one column that is a close prices, right? We can use this column either or the adjusted close price. So I would like to use the adjusted close price column as it is more accurate indicator of stock values. Before plotting the graph, let's define its size as 15,5. Like plot dot figure fix size of 15,5. And just plot this adjusted close column using plot like Google data take that variable adjusted close price and then dot plot so let's also give the title to the graph and labels to x and y axis plot plt dot x label of years on plt dot y label of adjusted close price right and then let's give the title of this graph as closing price of Google data. Let's run it. Yeah, hit u equal to here. So this is the closing price of Google data graph we have drawn. You can see the graph data is increasing like this and down somewhere uh, 2023 and up again 2024 here. If we want to draw a similar graph for all other columns, we can do the same or create simple function to do it for us. Let's create the function. Dev. Dev. Plot graph. Inside this plot graph, I just copy paste all this content. Right. Copy it. And then paste. If you see what are all inputs we can change here is the figure size, right? I'm taking it as input here again. So instead of this 15 comma 5, I can give that figure size. And the values to plot, that is the Google data values right here. I'm gonna change it to values and take as input here, values, comma. Also the column name, right? Column name to give it here in the my label also here in the title so I took three values as inputs here first one is fixed size and second one is values and finally column name I have replaced all of them here here the x label remains constant that is e years let me shift this figure size to the plot so it is very accurate and it will recognize it. So let's run it. Let's see the columns of the data set we have extracted. Google data set dot columns. You can see there are six columns, right? I just want to print the graph to all those columns. 
I can simply use a for loop and call this function right let me do this now I will call this for loop and I iterate over all the columns and call the function plot graph for column in google data dot columns plot graph of let me define the size 15 comma 5 comma google data of the column name and the column name again so let's run it it will draw six graphs beginning with the starting with open and until volume so open of google data so it is the open data and this is the high values data and low values data and this is the closing price data this is the adjusted close price data and at last this is the volume right pretty much simple to draw all these graphs so until now we have discussed about uh, drawing some graphs for those columns right but how do we actually predict the stock data let's discuss about this with an example consider a stock like google if you see there are many attributes in the data set like uh, open high volume close price so let's not uh, get everything here so let's work around a single attribute like closing price for example i will take 10 20 30 40 50 16 17 18 90 100 for instance just imagine this as closing price of any stock data right this is the first 10 days closing price data like 10 is the first day and 20 is the second day and so on there is a concept called moving average where we calculate the average for specific range of dates in the past counting from today if i want to calculate moving average for five days for this whole data set then we have to calculate it for five five days including the current date like 10 to 50 and 20 to 60 like that we have to calculate it for five five days and the calculated moving average is stored parallel to the current date that is to the 50 if i calculate from 50 to the back previous five days right so if i want to calculate the moving average for five days for the first day that is the value is 10 but the moving average will be null because i don't have the previous four days data to calculate the moving average for the first date that is 10 and it is same for second date third date fourth date so until here it is same because we don't have previous four days data and coming to the 50 so let me write this null 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 until 40 coming to the 15 i have previous five days data including current date that is 10 20 30 40 50 because i want to calculate moving average for five days right so i need the previous four days including current date to calculate the moving average so if i want to calculate the moving average for this data it is very simple the formula for calculating the moving average is let me take the same data temporary data then comma 10 to 100 and I want to calculate it for 5 days right print I'm going to take first 5 values right temp data let's take 5 and I have to add it because it is average right sum of 5 values divided by 5 so let's run it it is 30 right now the moving average for 50 here is 30 and then we can also calculate it for 60 for 60 it is let's do this from first index to sixth index and divided by 5 right it is 40 if you see it will be increasing 10 10 as i'm taking the linear data right so it is now if you see the moving average for fifth day is simply the average of previous four days including the including the fifth day so here 30 is moving average for fifth day and for sixth day it is 40 and seventh day it is 15 and so on like that so i hope you understand the moving average concept here the same moving average concept can be calculated using data frames right let me show it to you quickly let me show it to you quickly data equal to p dot data frame before that we have to import the pandas import pandas as pd and data frame of the same list right let's see the data i have i have to give capital d so let's see the data frame here 10 20 30 40 50 this is the first five rows of this data set right 
if I want to calculate the rolling, if I want to calculate the moving average for this data set, I can use a formula here in the data frame like data dot rolling of I need the moving average for 5 days right so 5 so for every data value I need a moving average for 5 days dot mean so this will give me the moving average for that 10 values let's see so if you see the first val 4 values is null here as I said the first 4 values is null and then 30, 40, 50, 60, 78 see 30, 40, 50, 60, 78 it is same right so if you see for data 50 we got a moving average as 30 and for 60 it is 40 data of moving average data so if you see for 50 it is 30 and for 60 it is 40 now I hope you understand this uh, moving average concept so you can ask me why do we have to know this concept to predict the close price data right using this moving average concept only we will be predicting the stock data the same concept comes here in the prediction also I will be taking first 10 days or 20 days or 100 days data and use this data for training to predict the next day close price. So I will feed this training data to a neural network as input training data and then predict the next day stock data. You are understanding right? If you understand this concept, you can able to understand what I am saying. So let's analyze the few other graphs using this moving average concept. You have already seen that I took the stock data for past 20 years right? Let's count how many days are recorded for each year guys. So I am taking a for loop for i in range of I took it from 2004 to 2024 and let me print the google data dot index to get the dates and I will get the specific year and let me count so to do that I have to convert this into a list first list dot count of i so I am taking all the years from the index of this data and counting the number of days in each year right let me print i also here so if you see in 2004 94 days is recorded and in 2005 252 rows and and so on until 2023 2015 if i give 2025 it will be 2024 right let me wait in 2024 it is just started right so it is 33 so on an average we got 250 number of days per year because the stock data trading or exchange will happen only on weekdays right if we remove all the saturdays sundays and public holidays we will be left with um, those 250 days data so let's take a moving average for 250 days and see how the graph looks google data let me store it in moving average for 250 days variable and then google data remember the variable name that is adjusted close price as it is more accurate than the close price so I'm taking this variable dot you remember the moving average formula here dot rolling of 250 days previously I have took uh, 5 days right like that I am taking 250 days here not dot mean let's run it let's see this moving average data but remember we will not see any data for the first 249 rows because its previous dates data is not available right if you see here for five days previous four days values is null like that if i took 250 days the 249 rows it will not have any data for moving average they are null let me show you google data of let me copy paste the variable name here let me take uh, if you see here see uh, this this printing all the rows for 2008 but if you see the first uh, starting it is null and then at ending you have some values but if you consider uh, looking at 250th uh, row you'll, you'll be able to analyze from where the actual value starts right so i'm giving it as uh, i'm starting from zero and ending at 250th row dot tail so i will get a lost five rows starting from 250 so if you see this is the 250th row and this is the 249 row so from 0 to 249 there is no data for moving average if you see data is available from 250th row let's draw the graph for this moving average for 250 days versus year we have already defined a function to plot the graph right that is plot graph so let's use it plot graph sorry for that graph I have to give the figure size 15,5 and 
the values that is Google data of the same variable I'm taking and the variable name it is also the same let's run it okay how to close it with this parenthesis let me run it so if you see the curve is uh, somewhat smooth end right this is the moving average for 250 days of the Google data I have calculated for the whole data right let me send the adjusted close price data also to that graph so I'm able to see both values in single graph adjusted close price comma and I have to queue then bracket here let's run it so if you observe here at the beginning of the graph the orange curve is that is a uh, moving average curve is started after a few days because moving average is null for the first 249 rows we can do this for any number of days and analyze the curves here how it changes let's see for random number like um, 100 days I can do the same uh, ruling dot mean here let's copy this paste it over here and instead of 250 I will give 100 and then copy this plot graph uh, function let's call it here also with 100 days moving average data let me run it so if you see um, now you can observe um, this is moving average for 100 days of google data but i want to draw this 250 days and 100 days moving average data along with this all edges and close price adjusted close price data in single graph we can also do that just copy this and paste it over here and you can send 250 days data also here just paste this variable here like that and you can give the name as moving average let me run it so if you observe here the 100 days curve line that is the orange curve is more similar to the original curve that is the blue curve and less smooth than 250 days curve but if you see this uh, orange curve is very similar to the original data then this uh, green curve that is 250 days data so we can take 100 days of previous data and predict our next day price more accurately using this neural network so through this analysis we can find out that how many days can we use right before going to create our model let me tell you about another small function which may be useful in our analysis that is percentage change it is very simple that it will tell us how much percentage the close price value is changed from the previous day let me write and show you in the comment google data oh, let me store it in percentage change close price equal to google data let me take adjusted close price dot pct change there is nothing but percentage change right let me print it let's run it so these are the percentage values like how the close price is changing for each row if you want to see it uh, more clearer uh, i can do this just add close price comma i'll close this dot head to print first five rows oops let me remove it so if you see here the first value is none because we don't have the previous data for this row to calculate the percentage change but if you observe the second row that is 2.6 it is changed from 2.4 to 2.6 that is some increment right somewhat percentage increment that is nothing but this 0.079430 percentage it has increased and if you see the third value it is 2.7 it is increased from 2.6 to 2.7 it is same 0.01 percentage it is increased and if you see the fourth value it is decreased from 2.7 to 2.6 that is to indicate the decrease it is assigning the negative value and 0.04 percent it is decreased so we can even draw this graph to analyze the percentage change in the closing price data like copy it again paste it over here and instead of this whole column names i can just give this percentage change column name percentage change so this is the percentage change of the google data all over the years for the past 20 years i say
So the data analysis part is completed now. Let's pre-process our data to make it very easy for our model to get trained. Now I will take the close price data. Let me store it in adjusted close price variable. Google data and taking the variable name adjusted close price. Let's run it. Now I will pre-process our close price data. I want to normalize our input data, that is the close price data. Normalizing in the sense, um, like I will convert all this data into into the some range of 0 to 1. Now if you observe, uh, I will take the max and minimum values for this data now. Max of dot values. Come on. Max and minimum values, I'm printing them. It is, the maximum value is 154 and uh, the minimum value is 2, right? So now I will, so now I will convert this data into a range of zero. So now I will convert this data in a range of zero to one. Instead of two to one fifty four range, I will convert this data into zero to one. So because uh, if I convert them into zero to one range, our model will get trained faster because these are the smaller numbers, right? So, so let me do this. To do that, I have to import the min max scalar from sklearn from sklearn dot preprocessing dot preprocessing import min max scalar let me create an object for it scalar equal to min max scalar of feature range okay can you anybody guess it it is 0 comma 1 right you have to convert it from 0 to 1 range and scalar data equal to what is the scalar data I want to transform the adjusted close price to 0 to 1 range right so I have to do it using one simple function that is scalar dot fit transform fit transform of this adjusted close price let me print this data scalar data so if you see it is 5 and power minus 0 5 that is uh, 5 power uh, minus 5 so if you take it in uh, here it will be like um, 0 0.0004 0 zeros and 5 right so it is very less so it is in the range of 0 to 1 they all will be in the range of 0 to 1 let's see the length of our selected uh, scale data length of scale data it is same as our uh, previous data right 4908 it's time to make our x and y data here so take x data and y data list here let's take uh, x data as a list and same as x data I can take y data as a list from the scaled data we will be extracting our x and y data if you remember I said we will be using a moving average concept here I will be taking 100 dates of previous data as input training data for each of the price in the data set in the sense, I will be taking 1 to 100 rows of data as training data. In the sense, I will be taking 1 to 100 rows of data as input training data to predict 101 row. You are understanding, right? And for 102 row, I will be taking the data from 2 to 101. And so on until 4908 rows. Right? Let me remove it. So let's see how we can do this. I'm taking a for loop for i in range of. You can consider I'm taking the 100 days space, right? The previous 100 days. So I'm starting it from 100 because the previous 100 days, that is the 99 days, will be having null values. If I take the moving average or if I want to consider the predicting values, I should take the previous values. But, but for 99th row, we don't have 100 previous values. So I'm taking, I'm starting from 100. 100, 100th, uh, 100th row. So I'm starting from 100 row, 100 comma length of scalar data. For x data, I will be appending the scalar data with 100 values, right? i minus 100. This will be the first 100 set until 100, right? So for y data, what can we append? Can anybody guess? Yes, it is scale data 
we can just append only one value that is i because we are creating it right so we will be creating the y data using the x data so if you want to predict this i value we have to take i minus 100 values that is 100 values data the previous 100 values data to create this i value let me convert this x and y data to a numpy arrays so i can make uh, operations easier to do that uh, i have to import numpy import numpy as and b and we can do it in one step x data x data comma y data equal to np dot array of x data comma np dot array of y data let me run it you can also see this data x data 0 comma y data 0 so if you see our x data is having so much data here it is like 100 values as I said and the y value is only one value using this previous 100 rows I will be predicting this one value right you're understanding what I'm saying right let's split our data into training and testing data set in this case let's take length of x data and I will take 70% of the data as training data and remaining 30% as testing data let me take the length of uh, our data length of x data So I'll be taking the 70% data, right? So into 0 0.7, and I have to convert it into integer. Let me print it. So my 70% data is 3,365, and if I if I take the testing data, 4908 minus this value, right? That is 1,543. But if you observe, we have removed the first hundred values of the our data set because they are null values if i want to predict them i need a previous 100 days value so i'll be taking minus 100 here because i did remove those 100 rows so our testing data is 1443 so it is clear right let's do this so our splitting length so splitting length equal to copy this length paste it here this is the splitting length I'm taking the x train equal to x data x data until splitting length right copy it paste it I'll take in the I'm taking a y train data from y data with same length now I'll be taking x test data this is the 30% data right so I'll be taking splitting length until the, the end let's copy it I'll be taking same for y test also I'll be taking same for y test also let's run it so let me print the shapes for these data sets the training set and the testing set print off x train dot shape Let me copy it, paste it four times to print a white line shape and x test shape and y test. If you observe the 70% data, 2365 data is in training data set of x train and y train, and the testing data 1443 rows are in x test and y test. This is as simple as that to split the data into training and testing data sets all good so let's start building our neural network model to predict the closing price here I'm using Keras so I can add different layers to our neural network model so to import that do this from Keras dot models import sequential here I'm also importing tens and LSTM from this Keras from Keras from keras dot layers we can import dense comma lstm so i imported this dense and lstm as i will be using this lstm that is long short term memory layer and few dense layers to build our model right let's run it to build a model i have to take an object 
so to do that I can give model equal to sequential here I am importing the sequential model so it transfers the data from input layers to the series of layers and then to the output layer here our first layer is LSTM so model dot add of LSTM let me take the number of neurons as uh, 128 first and I will be taking the return sequence values as true return sequences equal to true and at last I have to give the input shape so this is our first layer I have to give the input shape so I am giving it, I had given it the reason behind I have given this re return sequences as true is that it says the input to the next layer is a single vector or the sequence of vectors like that here in this case it is true like so it is a sequence of vectors and our first layer I have given the input step here and I transferred our time data here so our first layer I have uh, given the input shape here using this uh, training shape using this training data let me add the second layer that is also LSTM um, model dot add LSTM with 64 neurons and same as um, first layer I am giving the sequences but in this case it is false because I am not giving it as a sequence and model dot add off dense layer here with 25 neurons good and then our last layer as model dot dense layer again with only single neuron this is our output neuron and this is our output layer let's run it so it is running let us compile this model so to do that uh, I can give model dot compile compile and I have to transfer uh, two values here that is the first one is optimizer so if I want to say the optimizer what is optimizer uh, it will take a long video so just uh, put it aside uh, it is just to optimize the running of this uh, model it is Adam it is just an algorithm on loss value as uh, this is a matrix that is mean square error error so let's run it that is let's compile it it's completed and then let's be let's use the training data to fit into our model to fit it uh, we can do model dot fit of our training data that is uh, x train comma y train comma we can also give some other parameters like uh, the batch size so it will segregate our input data that is training data into some batches and here it uh, here the default value i'm giving it as one uh, or we can take as many batches i want or you want and the number of epochs i am taking it as two you can give any number of uh, epochs but it will take long time if you give more epochs the epoch is nothing but uh, it will run uh, our data set it will train our data set into this number of epochs like uh, the first it will take this many batches and then it will train over those batches once and it will take another batch and it will train again so like that it will train this many epochs let me run it it will train for two epochs i think it will take some time until then i will tell you what we have discussed until now so coming from the first point uh, we have imported our data from the Y Finance website using the start and end duration and we have seen the shape and uh, described the data set we have seen uh, what are the metrics we got like count, mean, standard deviation, mean, one, maximum values we can analyze all of them uh, and the info to get all the data types of the variables here it is a uh, float and int mostly so we don't have object data on the string data so there will be no need to converting the object into the numeric format I have skipped the step because uh, we don't have any objects or string values and I have checked it for uh, any null values but we don't find any luckily and I have imported this matplotlib uh, to draw some of the graphs between uh, all the columns and the years and I have defined a function to iterate over all the columns to create those graphs right? and then we discussed about this uh, moving average uh, concept I hope you understand all this concept if you don't understand it uh, please watch the video again and feel free to comment again uh, if you don't understand I will do another video regarding it and we have seen the moving average for uh, 250 days here and we plotted a graph here uh, and seen it uh, then we have plotted a graph uh, seeing that uh, adjusted close price 
and then um, moving average for 250 days the curve is a uh, smooth end but it is not very similar to the original uh, price so we took a random number like 100 so it is somewhat uh, more close to the original price so we took 100 days as in uh, space between the predicting values so i will be taking the 100 days that is the previous 100 days data to predict the current date uh, value price and i have plotted all the curves into the single graph that is the 250 moving average and the 100 days uh, moving average and also the original price and then I have said uh, about the percentage change, uh, this is a small function which you can be used for um, some analysis. And I have converted uh, like pre-processed this data into the range of 0 to 1 in order to make our model to train it faster. And then I took the x and y data from the scalar data I have done. And I have took the x and y data from the scalar data, that is the pre-processed data. This is the data. And and I segregated the data into the training and the testing data sets. Then this is the model that is running now. See, it is not yet completed. Uh, it is still in epoch 1. It has to complete two epochs. It will take some time. Let's wait. So guys, it's completed now. Let's see the model summary now. Model dot summary. You can see the first layer is LSTM with uh, 128 neurons and then the second layer is LSTM with uh, 64 neurons and, and then dense layer with 25 neurons and dense layer with a uh, one neuron that is output layer so you can see the parameters uh, so you can see the shapes and the number of layers it had using a summary function so let's predict the stock data using this model as our test data is already made previously predictions equal to model dot predict of x test so let's run it it's predicting the data is taking the test data and predicting the data. Let's see these predictions, how it look. Predictions. You can see all the values are in the range of 0 to 1, right? So I need to inverse transform them to get our original data. Let me do this. Scalar dot. I'm using the same object and inverse transform of predictions. I'll be storing it in inverse predictions variable let me print it in the same cell so if you see it is ranged from 55 to 146 something like that so we predicted our outputs now let's take the y test data that is the data where uh, we have to compare it with but the y test data is also in the range of 0 to 1 we have to inverse transform them so copy the same cell and paste it over here but instead we have to give it a y test here also the y test Now you can compare all the values here. So here it is 55 and it is uh, similar to that, like 53. Let's see the root uh, mean square error, how it gets like the accuracy and the error. In order to do that, uh, I can give this formula np dot square root of np dot mean of. Let me give this inverse mean of. How to square this difference inverse predictions minus inverse test right after that i have to take the mean value and the square root value that's it so i'll be storing it in inverse rmse not inverse rmse i'll be storing it in a rmse variable that is only square error so let's see how it is so let's see how much it is so it is 2. So 2 is pretty much good value I say. It has very less error. And let's see this data, the predicted data in some graph format, right? That will be good. So in order to do that, uh, I have bound the data frame. So I will be drawing the original data on this predictions data in the same graph. So we can able to visualize them all together. So now let's plot the graph with the predicted values and original values. Before that, I need to map the dates that is index with dates to this um, data. Let me do it. Plotting data equal to how to create a data frame like this. Data frame of you can give a dictionary here. Inside this dictionary I can give the original data or original 
data that is I can say the original test data and this is nothing but the inverse y test right this is the original data but while I am transferring it to the data frame I had to give it a one dimensional array but if you see here it is a two dimensional array so I will be reshaping it into one dimensional array reshape of minus one so it will convert it into a one dimensional array and then the second value is the predictions predictions you know it is inverse predictions same as y test now we will reshape it reshape minus one so and then I have to add the indices right the date indices remember so the index is nothing but the google data's google data dot index but wait this test data is having only the 1433 right so I can use that uh, splitting length variable to get the exact index values so splitting splitting length place 100 values that I have removed from the tiny data until the lost values so let's run it and see the data frame dot head to get the first five rows so if you see here the original test data and the predictions for 53 we got 55 53 55 and 54 54 they are almost similar let's plot this graph they are almost similar let's plot this graph plot graph of I will be giving the size first 15 comma 6 comma the data that is plotting data I have already created and the titan so this is the test data right so I'm giving it as test data so I'm giving it as test data let's run it yeah so if you see that a blue curve is the original test data and the predictions are the orange one you see they both are almost similar you can see the curves are pretty much accurate because I said uh, the root mean square error is 2 it is very less error so it is uh, predicting very correctly let's plot this graph with the whole data so to do that uh, we need to combine our predictions to our original data set so I can do the same thing copy this copy it here paste it here instead of this plotting data I need to concatenate the original data pending set and this predicted results right so I can use pd dot concat inside this concat I have to send this original data that is inside the list I have to send it that is the adjusted close price I have to send the test data set right so I will be taking the splitting list plus 100 so I will be getting the adjusted close price uh, test data plus the plotting data I have created here and the axis is 0 you can see the whole data let's run it so if you see the adjusted uh, close price is in blue color and the original test data that is also the original uh, data we got it from the website that is in orange color and the predictions are in green color they both are in exact same curve so this blue data is the training data we took and these are the test data we have predicted so here the prediction ends but uh, wait I have created a web app for this let me show the web app quickly before that I have to save this model model dot save latest stock price model dot keras I'm saving it as latest stock price model dot keras so it's created here let me open my vs code to create a web app so I have opened my vs code here I will be creating a file here that is web stock price predictor dot py import stream rate as ht and then we have to import our required libraries like uh, pandas right pandas as pd and numpy as np and we have to import um, so in order to import this uh, saved model we have to import load model from keras from keras dot models import load model and we are um, drawing different graphs right so we have to import the matplotlib also matplotlib 
dot py plot yes plt so until here this point on the inputs are over so we have one more uh, package that is y finance we should not forget it because we are getting data from it right y finance as yf so let's give the title for this web app st dot title let's say stock price predictor app app so starting from the first step I have to take the input uh, right the first step is to take the input from the user so which stock data he wants to pre-process and predict the data so to take the input have to give have to give a text input that is ST dot text input text input of I can say enter the stock ID like that and I can give the default value here also like default value is book that is Google after that I have to define the duration right so to define the duration I have to import the date time import date time like that and define end and start end date time dot now and start date time like that date time of end dot year minus 20 years and end dot month comma end dot day so let's download the data here I can say same as this is I can say Google data again. It is just a variable, you can use anything. Download of the stock data and the start and the end duration, right? Right. Before that I have to store this input in a stock variable, right? Here is the stock variable. Then and then let me import this model here first. So to do that um, I can do model equal to load model of you can your latest stock price model dot kiras you can give it like this so let me take uh, an header here like the stock data dot subheader stock data right I can write the data here st dot write of the Google data so next step is to split the data into training and testing set right but we are not training here because we have already imported the trained model here so we just need the test data set of course we have to split it on uh, let me take the splitting length splitting length the same int of length of google data star 0.7 that is 70 percent data length i can take x test from this variable i can take x test pd dot data frame of google data but i want the close price values i can even take the adjusted close price values but let's take the close price values because uh, they are almost same i can say they will be same uh, every time this is the 30 percent data I have taken and I want to draw different graphs on the web app so let me define this plot graph function I have defined it already in the Jupyter lab so I am defining it here also I am taking the figure size values and one more value full data so let me give it like this fig equal to plt dot figure of fig size you know that uh, fig sizes figure size and we can plot like this the values and plt dot plot of the full data if i send the full data i have to select the close variable first and then uh, let me choose a color uh, let's take the full data color as blue and the values as orange 
right and if say and let's return this figure right like that let me see this uh, first how it is running streamlet run so let's see how it is running so it is opening the web app here it is not yet completed but i'm showing how it will be like the ui so this is the title i have given and this is the input stock data i have given the gook the default value and the stock data until this point we have completed the web app let me complete it as fast as possible let me draw some graphs like um, st dot subheader let me draw a graph for uh, moving average of uh, 250 days as we did it in the Jupyter notebook let's take uh, the original close price and moving average for 250 days right let me store it in the google data of moving average for 250 days and equal to google data dot you can either use dot or anything as you wish close rolling of 250 dot mean so i'll be taking the average moving average and i will be plotting this on the web app using this streamlit library plot graph of i'll be taking the size as 15 comma 6 again and google data of the same variable name and also i'm sending the full google data so i can able to see all the data right let me copy and paste it uh, for two more times because i want to view it for 100 days also and 200 days let me change it to 200 200 200 here also it is 200 and one more time for 100 days 100 days and 100 days and what if i want to print all the 250 moving average data and 100 days moving average data and the original price in the same graph so i'll be copying this and pasting it here and moving average for 250 days it is the original close price and the moving average for 100 days and moving average for 250 days but if you see the graph only accepts uh, two data sets here but i have to give the thought data set uh, as 250 days right but i have to give the thought data set as a uh, 250 days right so in order to get that i will be creating another data set here that is uh, the optional parameter extra data equal to zero by default and extra data set equal to none let me give it like this and if extra data is not zero i will be plotting that extra data set the plot of extra data set so cool right so by default it is zero uh, even i can give it here zero 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 even though if you not give zero it will be printing it so i can give it as one here you can give it as one here and the 250 rows data let me copy this and paste it, it here for extra data set so this will be plotting them so next what i have to do is i will be taking the graph for original price and the printed price but wait you didn't treat the data right so that's where uh, that's what my next step is so let me pre-process my test data first so in order to do that i have to import the pre-processor that is um, minmax scaler so, so in order to pre-process that i have to import the minmax scaler from sklm so from sklm so in order to do that i have to import the minmax scaler from sklm so from sklm dot preprocessing import minmax scaler like that and scalar equal to create an object scalar 
feature range from 0 to 1 and let's take the scaled data this is the test data I seen dot fit transform the test data that we have taken already right mm, let's take the close price itself let's divide it into a x data and y data so we can compare it after predicting to calculate the accuracy right so y data for i in range of and taking the space as 100 so i will taking i will be taking the previous 100 days so i will be taking the previous 100 days of data to predict the current data so i will be taking previous 100 days data to predict this um, price comma length of scale data so i will be adding the data here dot append of same we did it in the Jupyter notebook scale data first 100 rows until high until i so y data dot append of scale data of i so we need to convert it into a number array in order to give the value to the predicting uh, function right so to do that i have to import uh, numpy it is already imported right okay so let's do it data equal to p dot area of x data comma np dot area of y data and then let's predict it predictions equal to model dot predict of x data we have to inverse transform this data right so let's do this inverse predictions equal to scalar dot inverse transform of predictions and inverse of y text right let's do it inverse transform of y text let me create a graph for that um, we don't have text so we'll be giving data by data right okay that's good let's take the plotting uh, data here i'll quickly copy paste from here let's copy this paste it over here so this is the plotting data everything is fine right so instead of uh, plotting data dot head I, so i can give it as st dot write off dot head instead of head i can use all data so st dot subheader saying that it is the predicted uh, values versus original values so original values versus predicted values right and then at launched a simple graph to show the original close prices and the predicted close prices uh, in a graph format so let's do that uh, subheader original close price versus predicted close price like that let's draw this figure equal to plt dot figure figure size so i want to give the legit to this so i am writing it uh, outside the function instead of calling that uh, predefined function we did i'll be copying it from here the same data i will be plotting copy this instead of adjusted uh, i can view it as google data dot close price right good and then i will be giving the legit legit so the first one is data that is not being used because we are not using it for even training purpose also and the second data is the original text data the third data is the predicted predicted test data let's plot this graph, py plot figure 
let's save it and see how our web app looks I hope it is still running let's go to the web app let's go to the web app refresh it by default it is taking the Google um, data it is printing the stock data here you see and this is the original close price versus the moving average for uh, 250 days and this is the graph for uh, original close price and uh, moving average for 200 days this is for 100 days right but wait they are almost same because I should change this uh, I missed it let me change it quickly I have to change it here 200 100 I don't need to give it here I don't need to give it there so let's save it I think this might work good let's go to the web app refresh it so it's taking the default Google data it's printing the stock data here the open high low prices and closing prices adjusted closing prices and volume this is the graph between the original close price and the moving average for 250 days and this is the graph between the close price and the moving average for 200 days they both are almost same and for 100 days you see it is similar to the close very close to the original price and at last I have uh, given the graph for a close price 100 days and 250 you can see the close one is a curve for 100 days moving average for 100 days and this is for 250 days if I go down this is the original values and printed values for the close price so they are almost uh, similar like with uh, I said right like 2% error rate they will be printing all these values it will be printing all these values with a 2% error rate but it has uh, more accuracy I think I see and at last this is the graph for uh, whole data the blue line it is data not used and the uh, orange line the original test data that is uh, being used to test the model and the printed test data is in green color you can see there you can make it big right so this is our web app let's try for different uh, data instead of google i can try microsoft for microsoft uh, you can search it here you can open this website and search for microsoft for microsoft it is msft you see msft so if i instead of a group i can do msft enter it is running so see it given the stock data for microsoft here and the opening close price for and the original close price a graph versus the 250 moving average day values it has given the graph and for 200 days moving average value it is given the graph and for 100 days it is given the graph if you see here also for 100 days moving average it is very close like this and if you see the printed values also it will be 2% error rate yes we are not trying this data separately we have trained the google data already with the 20 years data and this is the test data we are taking from this microsoft data and we just printing it right we just imported our model we just imported our model there and printed it here this is the printed data and original data along with the date and this is the and this is the last graph we have uh, done to see the close price values and the printed close price values and the blue color one previously as i said it is the data that is not being used previously we have used it for uh, training in the uh, jupyter notebook but here we are importing the model so we are not using it you can use it for some other cases like if you see the hdfc bank it is a hdb let's try it hdp and so it is a stock data and the original close price and moving average for 250 days and original close price versus the moving average for 200 days and 100 days and it is a combined 200 and 250 moving average and this is the printed values and this is the lost graph I'm showing you every time for the test uh, data set and the printed values and this is the lost graph for the printed values right you can even search for a uh, bitcoin also here let's see bitcoin it is btc hyphen usd right let's search for it btc usd if i send enter uh, it will be giving the time the data with this if i give enter it is showing all the data set here and if i go up this is the original close price for that bitcoin data versus the moving average for 250 days and this graph is for close price data versus the moving average for 200 days 
and the moving average data for 100 days versus the close price data it is very close than any other uh, curve see it is very close the 100 days value and this, this is the combined uh, and this is the combined graph for 100 days moving average and 250 days moving average at last here is the original values versus predicted values for that close close price so they are uh, almost similar you can see and this is the lost graph for the uh, close price values and the predicted close price values so in my next video i'll be doing bitcoin price prediction tutorial please subscribe if you understand and the content is very used thank you